going to record this. So back at what I was talking about, starting from scratch, this is being Jail's garage. We're going to show you guys the entire process of 3D printing after the print is done. Uh, prior to that, it's just boring 3D design modeling stuff, but this is the, the part that matters. So the way that this, this print works is that this technology works. It uses a, an LCD screen and a UV light. Uh, the screen pretty much opens up whatever pixel that needs light to go through. It goes down. Uh, the UV light goes through it, cures it for a certain amount of time. Once it's done, blocks the light out, goes back up, and repeats the process uh, thousands of uh, times. Um, once it's done, you see the product before you. Now, there's all these little things, what we call supports. These supports is what allows this print to happen. Um, if these supports weren't here, the model will not pretty much print. That's pretty much the nature of it. So how does this work? Well, we have to be very, very cautious uh, the next step. And this is why I'm wearing gloves. We wear gloves to protect our skin. Resin, the moment UV light touches it, not just fluorescent lighting, actual UV light, will start to immediately cure this uh, liquid. And so what we do is that we use an alcohol bath of isopropyl, uh, either 70 to 100% or 97%. The higher the percentage, pretty much the better. If you can get 100% isopropyl, do it. And it makes the process just so much easier. Um, so what we do, we're going to scrape it off. Uh, here we go. You don't want it to fall down like that, but it did. Um, hopefully it didn't break anything, which I don't see. We're going to go down here and dunk it over and over and over. And what we're trying to do is eliminate the amount of resin drops inside here uh, while we break it off. Now, a lot of people like to cure the resin and then snip off the supports. I like to do it the other way. I like to do it when it's fresh because it's more flexible. Uh, when we're dealing with really, really, really thin um, supports, um, this is kind of the easiest way. So what we're going to do is we're going to snip this support and this is how I modeled it to, so I can do my best in breaking these little supports because if you don't break these, what's going to happen is that the model itself will snap here. This is very thin, very, very thin material. And we are trying to prevent from snapping it as we uh, take the supports apart. Now the problem with using like little snips like this is that over time they get resin in them and then they get really really hard to use. Now the ones, the supports that I'm breaking are the ones that I know that are going to give me a hassle during cleanup. because again this is a trial and error process so those are done you guys can see the supports here and all the supports here and there's a solid call it kind of a solid base so what i do is i start during the intake part and i snap these off pretty straightforward just because they're in the way and then i work my way around the back first Now I gotta be careful here. Now here, if you see, it's hard to tell, but here, this is where it goes up to the to the top of this. So uh, I gotta be very, very cautious on how I uh, snap these off because I can break the top of the, uh, of the engine cover and that's what I don't want it to do. So that's why I tend to do that towards the end as I break little things apart. And what I do is kind of like squeeze and twist. 
and just listen for little little indicators that it's snapping but and there see it broke the top and that's what i'm trying to prevent it doing but it it's super hard because you can't see it The good thing is I know how to fix it, so it's not that big of a deal if it's a little tiny crack like that. When the whole thing shatters is where I'm more concerned about. Now what I'm looking for now is since I already got it all cleaned up, I look for any type of imperfections, any types of cracks in the material. Because what happens with a resin, when it starts to cure, it likes to split. And uh, I've noticed that with a couple uh, models that I've been doing. Um, so what I do is I look for any imperfections in the resin uh, to see if I can find a way to fill it back up with a little bit of resin and let it cure so it stops that uh, splitting process even further. Um, funny thing about resin, again, it instantly cures the moment it has UV light in it. So we look for any type of imperfections like that. So see here, there's a little hole. Um, what you can do to repair that is you grab a Q-tip and underneath here, you put a piece of, of Q-tip and you lay a dab of resin right there. Put it in the UV light, let it cure instantly and just give it a little little uh, sandpaper scuff and it's done, it's fixed. It's super easy to fix this stuff, but it's very, very easy to damage it. That's the biggest issue uh, with resin uh, 3D printing. It, it's literally glass, you know, like plastic glass almost. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to a super clean bucket of resin, I mean of, of alcohol. This is pure 100% uh, IC propyl alcohol. And what I do is I do a dunk over here and I dunk back and forth just so I can get any type of residue off of it. Now there will be what we call resin residue or resin powder. Um, it gets created because you can't get all the resin out unless you soak it for like a long time and give it a, uh, an alcohol bath and shake it and shake it until all of it comes off. Um, unfortunately, as you can see, I don't have much space for that type of a uh, scenario. So we have to go this way. So I already have a couple models here that are cured. So we take these guys out. And I'll show you guys these when they're when I am done laying this guy back in there. So we're gonna lay this one. Um, this one has a hollow uh, transmission. So I have to make sure it cures like this in this direction. Uh, Cause if we don't, what's gonna happen is if I leave it down, it'll drain resin from here and damage the model. Uh, it's repairable, you just have to cut it and sand it and make sure it's you know taken care of. But we wanna, again, prevent as much of that as we can by doing this. So what I have in here is an, uh, a UV LED strip plus a UV lamp. Uh, this allows us to cure the models very, very quick uh, and efficiently without, again, over curing them too quickly. Um, again, because when you over cure them, they split and they just fail and this is a good example of the resin residue right here this comes off literally with the with the with the toothbrush and some alcohol and that's it it just scrubs right off um, but beautiful beautiful resin 3d model and you can see all of the detail in it um, this is using the uh, r32 with the actual all-wheel drive transmission or the front and rear uh, transmission setup with exhaust manifolds, uh, mounts for pulleys, the actual, obviously the famous R32 engine cover uh, intake with airbox. And you can see all the runners and everything. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful model um, for the R32 engine or the, what we, I like to call, I don't like to call them R32 engines. There are 3.2 liter VR6 engines that came in multiple cars not just the R32, just, just so you know. And then over here, we have a 12 valve VR6 engine, uh, 2.8 liter uh, with an O2J transmission attached to it. 
as you can see right here you can see all the spark plug wires but there's a they're filled with residue so um so i can show you guys the cleaning process for that let me grab a toothbrush a toothbrush here and then you just grab and just give it a little a little love in there and just work it eventually it will fall apart So for all you guys ordering these models, if there's a lot of resin residue left in there, again, a clean, clean thing of a brand new isopropyl bottle, um, uh, alcohol, and a toothbrush, just a good, good medium to hard bristle toothbrush, and just take your time. And clean it with alcohol. And you'll see it's all gone again it takes time it's not something you're gonna have instant gratification with but the end results pretty much speak for themselves they come out beautiful and all you do is if you're home you set them outside directly in the sunlight and that's it so we just did a 12, 24 valve i showed you guys the 12 valve now i'm going to pull out a uh, 12 valve vr6 model to uh, to get ready to get cured uh, cleaned and processed so uh, oh can't do that yet I gotta put my uh, my tray back in so what we got to do next is clean our, uh, our what we call build tray or build plate grab your toothbrush clean off all the residual resin here Now, once the resin's done, we'll grab a clean rag, or clean-ish rag. Um, this is the one I use strictly for uh, drying off alcohol and uh, res uh, like residue resin on this one. That one I use to clean up just resin, um, just because resin's kind of nasty by itself. It's really sticky, and um, it just doesn't, it just sucks. So, that one's done. Now we're gonna grab our bottle of resin. We use Elegoo, uh, just standard gray resin. Uh, we use thousand, uh, thousand gram bottles. Um, this is how we do it. We pour our resin. Uh, I usually go up to the third mark on these Creality printers. Okay, once your model and everything's done and you know you got your machine dialed in, it's pretty straightforward. Grab our cover. This is our UV light protector. Again, we don't want UV light hitting our prints as we print. That's kind of, you know, counterproductive. And go from there, but we're not going to go that far. Now, this is a 12 valve VR6. So we're going to show you guys the cleanup process on this one. So, the reason why I put my hand underneath it and everything because they like to get uh, drips, resin drip, and it's just really, again, it's really annoying to get that stuff um, on your skin or on your clothing. So, see that, that came off really nice. What we're looking for is to make sure all, any thick residual resin is just off as we're cleaning these off. because. You don't want any splashback in your skin or in your face. This stuff hurts, guys. So a quick like alcohol wash rinses it off pretty dang quick. Now this, the 12 valve VR6 is one of the hardest ones for me to clean up because of the spark plug wires here. Um, so we gotta be super cautious. Uh, not guaranteed that all of them will have them all printed. I'm probably telling you guys that right now because these are super, super tiny wires. All right. 
So that turned out really good. So we just do a cleaning. Now this one has a much thicker man uh, engine cover. So I'm not as worried to take off, uh, break off supports off of this one as much as I am with um, the 24 valve. And these are a lot easier to clean up. super clean now we just got to finish this last piece down here now I personally um, added double the amount of supports right here in the intake side uh, mainly because this area when it prints it on the machine likes to fail um, where it just doesn't print it print it at all and it sucks you know when you spend 10 12 hours printing an object and it fails at like 90%. It really does suck. It ruins your day. Um, so, personally, I added more supports. Yeah, it kind of ruins the model a little bit more, but not by much. Again, guys, um, the sheer amount of detail on these engines is insane, uh, especially for how big I'm making them and small. Um, I mean, as you can see, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six spark plug wires uh, coming out of here. Um, I mean, you can see the fuel rail, alternator, oil, you know, filter. It's pretty crazy. The amount of detail that these machines can print out. All right, so we go back in here and we kind of give it like a little, little rubby rub, just to get all the thick resin on top. Off, uh, you can. If you if you ever want to know what resin feels like, literally feels like slime, if it's on here. Then we go back over here to this alcohol. We kind of give it a little twirl. A little twirl over here and we're done then we go and again because this is an o2j transmission it will leak from the flywheel so what we want to do is make sure it uh, it cures uh, straight up like this and here's this guy Now I can show you what a failure looks like. And this is what I mean by the splitting. Look at this. You can see it completely split right down the middle right here as it printed. Um, again, this happens for multiple reasons. Um, but this is again a really good example of why it sucks when these things fail. Because this is a 10 hour print and you can see where it leaked right here. Um, and it failed probably looks like five hours in maybe four hours in and then it finished it so i mean if we really wanted to we can probably like snap this open and be a cool like little sideways thing and you know, it has a little duck bill on here and you'll see this all disappeared it sucks i mean it really does suck you know that's a good three four dollars of resin just gone um because again i'm not here to monitor my printers they come and go you know i, I just gotta pray and hope that they they make it through so yeah, it sucks, but it's cool. I mean, it still came out really cool. Maybe somebody might want this. I don't know. Uh, this goes in the oops bin right here with all my other failures. Um, yeah, but these made it through, and I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, currently, right now, we're stocking. We're starting to stock them um, before we put them back on our online store for, for sale. Um, 
because it takes again these guys you guys understand these take a very very long time to make and to produce them fast enough for the holidays we have to pre-make them now uh, because you guys have been going crazy for these uh tonight we're gonna actually gonna make the 1.8 t models uh for test prints tonight hopefully they're successful successful overnight so i can actually put them up on our online store and get them ready for for purchase <laughs> um so yeah that's the process guys thank you for tuning in um i will show you guys probably the the next one i'll do another cleanup on the 1.8 t motors so you guys can see the final results on that because uh, i'm super excited for it uh, hopefully you guys are as well uh, but yeah we're gonna get i'm gonna get back to work and finishing up the other model and then start printing the uh, 1.8 t's thank you guys uh so very much for watching this uh little little thing that i do here in my garage in my very very busy busy garage um thanks for watching pgl's garage and we'll see you guys later peace out everyone